Text overlapping text, overlapping everywhere. Plus, there's a strange noise when braking. At least driving it isn't boring. The range is supposedly 470 kilometers, which is decent, but when the screen showed 12 kilometers left, it suddenly stopped, catching the owner off guard. Just when they were almost at the charging station, they had to push the car. The car in the video is the Hengchi 5, a new energy vehicle by Evergrande, a Chinese real estate company. According to the owner, the Hengchi 5 started having problems shortly after they got it. Issues include text overlapping on the central control screen, strange brake noises, reduced range, and non-functional assisted driving features. Besides the issues highlighted in the video, other owners have reported problems with the heated seats and the actual range being only half in zero-degree temperatures. With so many problems, online users jokingly call it a brave man's car. In an effort to gain consumer trust, Heng Chi introduced a certified purchase method, where you pay in full upon delivery and can return the car for a refund within 15 days. The purchase funds go through a dedicated notary account. Evergrande also launched other promotional activities to boost sales, but despite their efforts, the new energy products haven't taken off. Since Evergrande announced its car manufacturing plans, they've launched nine models, but the only one that has been mass-produced is the Hengchi 5, with over 1,300 units delivered so far. Even if given a chance, it wouldn't work out. What's happening with Evergrande's new energy vehicle industrial park now? Normally, Hengche cars should have rolled off the line here. The Evergrande new energy vehicle industrial park, covering over 4,000 acres, was established in Zhengzhou Airport Zone in 2019. The battery manufacturing workshop to the north and the vehicle manufacturing base to the south now look particularly desolate. The glass curtain walls of the battery workshop can't keep out the cold wind and the steel structure of the vehicle manufacturing base is rusty. The iconic Evergrande car gate is overgrown with weeds. According to the man filming the video, when Evergrande built the industrial park in Zhengzhou, they also allocated a lot of residential land around it, which has now been reclaimed. Currently, no one has taken over this factory area, and it's unclear how long it will remain abandoned. Let's take a look at Evergrande's car manufacturing efforts. In 2016, Evergrande Group made it onto the global Fortune 500 list. Sensing the risks in China's real estate industry, Evergrande chairman Xu Jiayin began to consider transitioning to a new industry, setting his sights on the new energy vehicle market. In 2019, Xu Jiayin led Evergrande Group into the new energy vehicle industry. As a company initially focused on real estate, Evergrande faced challenges in talent and technology when entering the EV industry. Since Evergrande ventured into the automotive sector, it has been aggressively buying. Through a series of acquisitions covering the entire automotive industry chain, including technology, qualifications, batteries, sales, and talent, Evergrande Auto quickly mastered core technologies in vehicle manufacturing, chassis architecture, powertrains, hub motors, and power batteries. According to Chinese media reports, Zhang Chi, a senior employee at Evergrande Auto, revealed that at that time, the Shanghai Research Institute alone had 2,000 people, and the three production bases had an estimated 10,000 people. Evergrande poached engineers by offering at least 1.5 times their original salary. It was said that Evergrande's high salaries drove up wages in the EV industry. Public information online shows that Evergrande Auto established 11 professional research institutes, including the Advanced Technology Research Institute, Vehicle Technology Research Institute, Software Technology Research Institute, and Power Research Institute. The directors of these institutes were all prominent figures with extensive experience in the automotive industry. Xu Jiayin set a goal for Evergrande to produce and sell 1 million vehicles by 2025 and 5 million vehicles by 2035, with plans to invest 45 billion yuan in the car manufacturing business over three years. Under Xu Jiayin's management, Evergrande Auto's market value soared to 700 billion Hong Kong dollars, surpassing BYD and becoming the highest valued car company in China, even before trial production began. However, Evergrande's car manufacturing plans did not go as smoothly as expected. In April 2021, Evergrande Auto unveiled nine models, Hengchi 1 through 9, at the Shanghai International Auto Show. The booth was larger than those of top international car companies, and they held a press conference with numerous media to heavily promote the brand. 
Media attending the auto show revealed on mainland social platforms that when they were filming the chassis of the Evergrande Hungchu electric car, they found it empty with no suspension system or braking device. Security guards noticed the filming and almost expelled them from the venue. Insiders disclosed that after the farce was revealed, the booth was heavily guarded, with at least nine security personnel surrounding the display to prevent visitors from filming the car's underside. Evergrande Auto did not explain the reason. Using model cars at an auto show was unprecedented, and the entire industry mocked Evergrande. Some of the employees' classmates even joked that they were embarrassed. Longtime auto workers found the situation absurd. It was the first time they'd seen cars being carried to the show. They thought even a PowerPoint presentation would be better than showcasing unfinished experimental cars. From their perspective, the company's leadership thought building cars was like building houses, where model houses are common. In the auto industry, developing a new car typically takes around 180 weeks or three and a half years. However, Evergrande Auto started designing cars in mid 2019 and launched nine models at the auto show by April 2021, which is just two years. Launching nine models simultaneously from the start was unprecedented in the industry. Things took a turn for the worse in less than half a year. In September 2021, Evergrande Group faced a debt crisis, owing suppliers, creditors, and investors over 1.96 trillion yuan. Since Evergrande Auto's sales and finances were tied to the group's headquarters, the financial troubles of Evergrande Wealth affected Evergrande Auto as well. According to mainland media reports, Evergrande Auto employee Zhang Chu revealed that by September 2021, they could no longer pay salaries. The entire month of October, Evergrande Auto was on leave, and employees only received basic wages. Those in Shanghai received Shanghai's minimum wage, and those in Tianjin received Tianjin's minimum wage. Due to the financial crunch, many project teams were canceled. The entire operations department was laid off, and the chief designer of the vehicle architecture resigned. The company's Leadership decided to first launch the Hangzhou 5 without considering whether there were enough personnel for other models. As a result, most of the nine models stalled before production, and the remaining departments and employees who were not laid off were all reassigned to the Hangzhou 5 project. Zhang Chu said, "When the debt crisis hit, less than one third of the original staff remained in the research institute. We had to gather whoever was left to form a team." Evergrande Auto employee Zhao Xing mentioned the entire auto department, from south to north, now had less than 500 people. Evergrande doesn't pay you if you're not working, so people had no choice but to leave gradually. Public records show that at its peak, Evergrande Auto had over 6,000 employees. Another employee, Li Li, mentioned that the Hangzhou 5 taken to Guangzhou for production was actually the 93 car produced by the whole vehicle plant. An EVS, which Evergrande had acquired earlier, not the Hangzhou 5. In April 2022, when Evergrande Auto's executive director Liu Yongzhuo publicly showcased the Hangzhou 5, not all of them were actually Hangzhou 5. The blue one displayed in Tianjin was the Hangzhou 5, but the ones on the production line elsewhere, which were not shown in detail, were mainly the 93 cars produced by an EVS. In other words, Evergrande Auto used a sleight of hand to create the illusion that the Hangzhou 5 was being mass-produced smoothly. Li Li stated that from the financial crash of Evergrande Wealth until the delivery of the Hangzhou 5 in October 2022, Evergrande Auto operated on a stop-and-go basis, depending on the availability of funds. She said, "When there was no money, we either took breaks or disbanded teams, much like temporary workers on the streets. When funds were available, we would recruit more people and continue work. This caused us to lose many of our initial advantages to competitors, making us the lowest in the industry." Despite the eventual delivery of the Hangzhou 5, Evergrande Auto continued to face occasional funding shortages. Zhao Xin from the Hangzhou 5 project revealed that by the end of 2022, only 1,300 units of the model had been produced, and then the company ran out of money again, unable to afford raw materials. To inject funds into Evergrande Auto, in August 2023, the company announced an agreement with strategic investor Newton Group. Newton Group's subscription agreement involved a strategic investment of about 500 million U.S. dollars in Evergrande Auto, along with a transitional funding of 600 million yuan. Evergrande Auto revealed that all strategic investment funds would be used for its Tianjin factory to ensure the normal production of Hangzhou 5 and the mass production of Hangzhou 6 and 7. However, the transaction had 19 preconditions, including the successful restructuring of China Evergrande's debt and the absence of any major adverse events. 
In October 2023, the transaction was suspended. Evergrande Auto announced that Newton Group had paused its obligations under the share subscription agreement. This change was directly related to the incident where Xu Jiayin faced enforcement measures, which disrupted the restructuring of Evergrande's dollar bonds and led to Evergrande Auto's inability to meet the transaction's preconditions. By the end of 2023, when the agreement expired, Evergrande had not received the subsequent funds from Newton Group. Newton Group's strategic investment in Evergrande Auto was seen by the public as a lifesaver. Newton Group is an electric vehicle company headquartered in Dubai, UAE. Its predecessor, Iconic, was founded in 2014 and has a complete vehicle assembly plant in Abu Dhabi. Oliver Wyman partner Zhang Junyi told Shanghai Security News, Evergrande's car manufacturing is currently in deep crisis. On one hand, assets like the Hengchi Auto Tianjin factory have been pledged multiple times, making it difficult to find a buyer. On the other hand, with the fierce price war, China's EV industry has entered an overcapacity phase. For example, assets from WM Motor, an auto manufacturer that previously went bankrupt and reorganized, remain unsold. Evergrande Auto's 2023 performance report also highlights its challenges. According to the report released on March 27, 2024, Evergrande Auto's revenue for 2023 was 1.34 billion yuan, with a year-on-year -year loss reduction of 56%. The report also shows that Evergrande Auto's total assets were nearly 35 billion yuan, while total liabilities were 72.5 billion yuan. Cumulative losses and shareholder losses were 110 billion yuan and 37 billion yuan respectively, compared to 98 billion yuan and 68 billion yuan in 2022. On the same day Evergrande Auto released its report, the Chinese enterprise information platform Tianyancha showed that Evergrande Real Estate had five new executed cases totaling over 724 million yuan involving financial loan contract disputes, sales contract disputes, and construction engineering contract disputes. Evergrande Real Estate currently has over 590 executed cases with a total amount exceeding 49 billion yuan. The company also faces multiple consumption restrictions and enforcement orders for dishonesty. The Tianjin factory is one of Evergrande Auto's important production bases. However, as of December 31, 2023, the Tianjin manufacturing base produced Hengchi 5 according to market demand. Recently, due to funding issues, the group arranged for some personnel to take leave, and the Tianjin factory suspended production. According to Chinese media, on the evening of May 26, Evergrande Auto, which is deep in crisis, announced on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that China Evergrande's liquidators, Evergrande Health Industry Group Limited, Aislinn Global Limited, and others signed a term sheet with a third-party buyer to sell their shares in Evergrande Auto. According to the term sheet, the buyer and seller will further sign a final sale and purchase agreement for the transaction. China Evergrande holds approximately 6.3 billion shares in Evergrande Auto, representing about 58% of the company's total issued shares. These shares will all be sold. The announcement stated that upon signing the deal and following its terms and conditions, 3.14 billion shares, equivalent to about 29% of Evergrande Auto's issued shares, will be immediately acquired. Additionally, about 3.2 billion shares, accounting for about 29.5% of the remaining shares, will be subject to a call option exercisable by the buyer within a certain period after the agreement is signed. This means that after the transaction is completed, China Evergrande will no longer hold any shares in Evergrande Auto. To promote the development of electric vehicles, China provides subsidies that are three to nine times higher than those offered by the U.S. and Germany. Local governments have put significant effort into supporting car manufacturing. However, with the decline of Evergrande Auto, its subsidiary Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Investment Holding Group Limited has recently been required by local administrative authorities to return various rewards and subsidies amounting to about 1.9 billion yuan, approximately 262 million U.S. dollars. The reason given is the failure to fulfill contractual obligations, leading to the termination of a series of investment cooperation agreements with the local government since April 29, 2019. Evergrande Auto's statement indicated that complying with this requirement would have a significant adverse impact on the financial condition and operations of Evergrande New Energy Vehicles and its related subsidiaries. 
Evergrande new energy vehicles will actively communicate and coordinate with the relevant local departments according to the directive. Trading of the company's shares has been suspended since 10.56 a.m. on May 17th until further notice. According to Reuters, earlier this year, China Evergrande, the world's most indebted real estate developer, was ordered to liquidate due to its inability to provide a concrete debt restructuring plan. On August 17, 2023, Evergrande Group filed for bankruptcy protection in New York. On September 28, 2023, trading of Evergrande-related stocks, including China Evergrande, Evergrande Auto, and Evergrande Property, was suspended on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. On the same evening, Evergrande announced that its founder and chairman, Xu Jiayin, had been subjected to enforced measures due to suspected illegal activities.